This here is a Chevrolet Camaro stock car race car, and it clearly has not been on the track racing in many, many years. I'm at Bradenton, Florida at the Freedom Factory, and this is where it gets interesting. This track was formerly known as DeSoto Super Speedway, where this exact car was a winning car back in the day. I'm gonna do the right thing, not only try to get this thing running and driving, but run laps around the track once again. Welcome to Vice Grip Garage. We got partage. Now, some of you might have immediately recognized this car as, hey, isn't that James's car or Jack Stan's? And it is. He is actually the owner of this vehicle. When I was here picking up the Rebel, it was actually parked right in front of this, about 19.3 feet, and I immediately fell in love with this. In fact, I could still see my knee mark where I kneeled next to this for about 23 minutes, just, you know, scanning the peepers on this thing. It is good. I mean, real good. So I asked him about it and he won't sell it, don't blame him a bit, but I asked him, hey, can I just tanker on it, see if we can get her fired up and moving? And he said, sure, actually I got some parts for it and he stopped by early this morning and dropped off a bunch of stuff we'll look at here in a minute. So I asked him the history on the rig because you guys know that's one of my favorite parts and he actually has a photograph of this thing going around the track. Guy's arm out the window, checkered flag. He even had a matching box truck painted up all cute bunch of parts inside this thing. Serious racer back in the day. And this was the top contender out here at DeSoto Super Speedway, now known as the Freedom Factory. So I thought, you know what? We gotta do the right thing here and just get this thing back out there, swinging laps, and see what this car can do. I know it's a small block Chevy. I know it's a four speed. I know it's a Camaro, and that's it. So let's take a walk around this thing, see what we're working here with, and start wrenching. Now I do not know exactly what class this ran back in the day and it varies by state and association of course but I'm assuming it was probably a street stock class. Some of you might call it hobby stock but of course it was on 3 8 asphalt not dirt. Kind of a different spring setup right here we can already see. And normally these right fronts unless they weren't allowed were kicked out. Yeah that's stock control arms, A arms on that as well. I mean, it looks really rough because of the paint, but it really hasn't been that beat, if I'm being honest. Just surface rust that I could see so far. That's kind of a newer-ish nose cone. Well, compared to the year of the car. Homemade air dam down there. That's pretty cool. Pretty typical chicken wire up here. Might have been clobbered on this side. We could take a closer look, but seeing something in the frame horn down there. Doors are welded shut. And we got some bump bars on this thing. Robin's racing. You know, you gotta be prepared for that. Just a little rubbing, Harry. Robin's racing. Bumpers were tied down. This wasn't for stability on the bumpers. This was to try to prevent anything from hooking. So this is kind of a common mod to get things to slide off of the rear bumper here so you don't get hooked up and drug around. If uh, someone's right front, for example, were to get into your quarter, you're gonna be turning away fighting that, but if they get hooked on you, you're gonna go around. I think James said he has a deck lid somewhere. Ooh, there's some pretty heavy rot. He found this in a backyard, I believe, and that's probably, you know, what brought her down a little bit was sitting out in the elements because I doubt it was back in the day. Looks like we got, you know, the old saddle fuel cell. She's just hanging on in there. Lots of bars, lots of bars. We'll try to get down and see how this frame is tied in. If it is, it should be. Otherwise these just twist in half basically, but someone really put some thought into designing on this thing anyway. Let's see what we got. Yeah, some sort of homemade deck lid. Another door bar over here, welded off again. Tons of parts, fuel jugs, things like that. I see a tack over here on the side. 
He was a side glancer. Some racers like their tacks on the column, some like them on the A-pillar. That's where I like them because I'm always looking left or forward. And some like to just, you know, shoot over real quick. Yep, I'm on the chip, you know. And then put the important gauges in front of you, oil temperature, water temperature, things like that. This is a really cool car. It's probably got so much more history that we're not even aware of right now. In fact, if you know anything about this Camaro, the 13X would have been DeSoto Speedway again. Put it down there in the comments so we can all read it, learn on it, soak it in a little bit. I just think it's really, really neat. I guess we can get all these parts out that James dropped off. MSD Pro Billet Distributor. Holy smokes. He had planned on getting this thing running and I think I approached him at the right time. He's so darn busy, you know. Got some muscle car valve covers from Holly. We got a fuel pump. MSD 6AL2. Those are nice. I think they got the two-step and all sorts of stuff built into them. MSD lightning hoses. Holy cats. MSD coil. Got some breathers. Two of them, of course. What is this? What do we got here? High performance intake manifold. Running out of roof room here. Okay. Oh, I think we got a fuel make it happener. Well, we did. I just dropped it 16 times. What have we got? What is it? 750 street fuel make it happener. There's still a bunch of stuff in here, but I don't think it has anything to do with this car. I think he moved, he was saying, and just kind of tossed some miscellaneous stuff in here to complete his move. I've done it a million times. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put on as much of this as I can for James, just as a thank you for letting me play around with his race car. Oh, this thing looks really cool. Cardboard seat cover, nice, very nice. Looks like the battery on off is back here. There is a battery in it sure it's probably dead got the belt still still has a window net wonder if we can get a year off of that that would be neat and we'd basically take probably two or three years off of that we could figure out maybe when it was last ran we'll look at that in a minute aluminium seat with the moldy carpet padding you know that's a factory option for these seats if you look it up some of the faster or more serious dirt track seats have a bolster that goes way out because when you're going roundy rounds, your knee tends to come out and it gets really, really exhausting actually on the hip bone, having your legs flail out like that. You got the Dale Earnhardt style wheel, just enough padding to do nothing. That's great. We got some stick welding on the steering shaft there. That seems fine. Push button ignition, that's probably to the lightning whirler up there, the old toggle switches. A temp gauge. Oil pressure and tack, and a USA sticker. I mean, what else do you need, really? You know what I mean? Oh, that is cool. That mirror is perfect for this car. Again, a lot of bars. There's a bar down the center. Quite a bit in here. Yeah. I mean, looks like a pretty decent chassis. Three bars in each door. A lot of weight there, too. We got, speaking of weight, we got some weight reduction down there. Looks like the header is literally holding this car off the ground right now. So that's fine. That seems normal. Nope, definitely wrong. Gonna have to dress the winder if we get this running, if we plan on going anywhere. That is on there. She's thick, you know what I mean? I see a lot of hornets buzzing around. That's also fine. Not gonna worry about that. I don't know if I should leave this stuff. No, let's go ahead and get all this stuff out now just so we can clean it up for them anyway. Hindsight be a nine six. I guess if it doesn't run, I just gotta put all this back. Is this a rooster made of license plates? I just, every time I think I can't like him more, I just, something else pops up. Oh, right in the retinas, it's bad. Oh, I didn't let go of the jug though. We have uh, used oil full to the capacities in that jug, it's definitely like a 1530, something like that. It wasn't really that bad. I don't know why he changed it, but, huh. What is this one then? 
not sure. I need to get something to spray my eyes out with. Carb cleaner, maybe? I don't know. I can't see is what I'm saying. That burned even worse. But anyway, I guess if we got to change the oil on this, we got some available right here. Don't know what that is. Some sort of import part. We got mufflators all over the place. Ooh, this might be the air cleaner. In fact, I know it is based on the scoop design around the rear. Okay. The packing skills. I'm telling you, there's some talent here. Propane with the weed burner 600 wand. I mean, I think that's good enough to see if it runs. We got room in here. Guy can at least root around. Found an ignition relay. That's good. Fire extinguisher. Yeah, that was empty in 1983. So it should still work for us. Okay. Well, I guess let's get the power barn open. See what we got. The key to fast pit stops is just... You run no hood pins. See, then you can, you're in there. Well, they cut all the webbing out of that and everything. Sure. Okay, yep, small block, chubby. <sighs> Suspension's great, so that's good. One of the first things a guy can do here is just shoot his eyes down on the casting number and figure out exactly what kind of small block we got in this here rig. GM makes it super easy. You got this casting number behind the head, gives you a general idea. If you want to get precise, then you just look at the pad underneath where the charging whirler is. This one happens to be gone, so we can maybe even clean that up and get a little bit farther. But this one, 397-0014, which is very similar to the 397-0010. That's a 1970 to 1976 small block Chevy. This was considered a high performance block or the heavy duty truck line and it came with a two or four bolt main. I would be willing to bet probably two Casadillas and a stiff wobble pop that this is a four bolt main given, you know, this situation going on right here. So a pretty good little mouse in there. As far as the clutch, no idea. As far as the rear gears, no idea. Hopefully if all goes well, we can kind of figure that out as we go. But let me get you guys in here and see what we got going on. I do see some angry looking yellow creatures. Great. Just your basic small block chubby. We got the factory heads on her. We got some pipe laters though. And a newish looking fuel making happener on here. Ooh, she's a little gravelly, but she's opening. Extremely dirty, so let's ignore that. We got HEI on it, but that's really it. Very basic. Flex fan. It's got an aluminium radiator in her. So they were allowed to play with their shock mounting, but not with the control arm. So I would probably say this was definitely like a stock class that this was running in. Definitely was boogered in up front. See, originally I saw this through the wheel well. They had a bar on there that they stepped off and you can see the frame horn is bent. And it's pushed in here, been rewelded, reweld, reweld. So it's had a hard collision. You know, not so much here, but like here-ish at some point, but been fixed. Unfortunately, a guy doesn't have a ton of time to tinker and play around with this rig. We're gonna have to be a little bit rude to this thing, unfortunately, and just, you know, try to fight and bite through this. Normally I'd use the belt to just grab the fan if it's a fixed mechanical like this or like a flex blade or something. And you can see if the engine rotates. Then you move on to a wrench. But I'm gonna get in here and just grab her with the old meat mitts and just see if I can ranch it around that way. The guy's got, you know, enough pressures in the forearms and the grip, you can get it done. Yep. 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 Oh yeah, she's rotating. Engine's not stuck. Throttle edge is opening. 
easy access to the fuel make it happen here. We got a lightning system. I mean, we got all the ingredients here to see if this thing barks off. I guess we could check on the Earl's. I'm right here. Oh, it's plumb full. No, that's, that's brand new 1030. No fuel, no coolant, which this should have water in it. I don't taste any excessive metal or anything like that. Well, where'd this come from? Oh, I pulled the whole darn jogging out of the block. Okay, well, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. It's got an AC Delco filter on the thing. I mean, whoever parked it cared about it. That's for sure. We might go ahead and change on that anyway. Let's throw a battery on this thing. See if we can figure out the switches and knobs, do a fire test, see if the starter will, you know, help it start. And then we'll move on to just, will this thing, can it, will it make, can we make some noise with it the way it is? Getting ready to pull the battery out. I don't know how I walked past this box 115 times. Beautiful Hooker Blackheart headers. And these are all set up for the Z-Bar. So this should fit pretty slick. Got the gaskets and the hardware. We'll maybe see if we can get those put in as well. So we got an Optimus battery in here with a horrible looking ground to the frame. And uh, I think we'll just not even try to get this going. Pull this thing out. And I got a Super Starts. We'll just lay down in there crudely and I think that'll work just fine. Ooh, glove box. Can we use that? Nope, can't. Get on out of here. Under the battery were some ants in there. Larvae. Gonna wait a few minutes, let them fellers move those units out. And then we'll throw in a different one there. Also noticed, you know, there's no floor. So you have your full floater rear ends and some rigs, and then you got your full floater seats as well. That's really snazzy. Very specific reason I bought this guy. 650 CCAs at zero F, you know, plus the goal handle here. Just the convenience is there. Let's see. Coming in, little fellers. Oh, there goes Daryl. Sorry about that. Oh, we got that battery in. Let's go hot. Going hot. Yeah, it's just me, I guess. Anyway, we got that on. Let's see if it cranks over. Flip the toggle switch. Neutralis. Ignition. Oh, she cranks. But, did you hear that? Yeah, we got a piston down. Compression wise, one of the eight's not happy. So normally spin over with a consistent even sound and you got the lope. Da 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 ba, da 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 ba, da 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 ba. So maybe just stuck rings. She might come around at 6,000 RPM in third gear. I don't know, but we'll find out. A couple onions ought to do it. Just making sure all the lightning hoses are on here. You never know. No mouse chews. That's the one consistent thing I'm seeing about Florida. You just got like the mother green creatures, alligators or whatever. I don't know if they like lightning hoses though. Anywho, I digress. Normally, a guy likes to get in here, test on the ignition coil, the full lightning system, make sure we got lightning right at the sparkulator so you can, you know, check that off the list. A guy doesn't have to worry about it. I just noticed in memory of number three, Dale Earnhardt. So that tells us this was running in the early 2000s. Anyway, we're moving on to, you know, fire make it happen here. If we dump this down the throat, we spin her over, it should fire. If it doesn't, then we know we've got an ignition issue and we'll have to work backwards. I don't got a digital meter or nothing, so. Wow, how come they gotta hermetically seal these? This is just, pre-engineered, mixed, ready to go, 40 to one, like weed whacker stuff. It's got some two-stroke oil in it. It's a little bit easier on your rig if it doesn't start. 
it's less likely to wash down the cylinder walls as well. That was way too much, by the way. Perfect. Let's spin this over, see if it barks off, makes any noise. That's hard on the starter. Maybe I should have went longer. Nope. It's probably gonna run. Normally I got my lone wolf out here wired in, but I'm very limited on tools today. I could crack the throttle a little bit, give it some more wind. That probably would have helped. But I'm pretty darn confident this thing's gonna fire off. So now we need to make a decision. Do we keep moving forward, trying to get this thing zinging as is? Or do we dive right in, start putting speed parts on? Huh. I don't know. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Huh? Okay. Yeah, I get that. I know. What's in the fuel cell? Well, I don't know. Let's, let's go look, I guess. Normally, I disconnect these as well. You don't want to be sucking in a bunch of stuff, but for some reason, I've just had better luck with fuel cells over the years. It's foamed. Let me get to the bottom. It's just like 91 octane probably, maybe 93, definitely not any sort of race gas. And there's about two gallons in it, tops, with the foam in there. But I don't smell a ton of rust or varnish. Of course, there's a little bit from sitting that long. The good news is this was parked a long time ago. Gas from the old days sat a lot longer and a lot better than gas from today, that's for sure. It seems like gas today goes bad in a month or two, and I ain't kidding you. Huh, well, let me think on it for a minute. Well, the guy did decide just to jump right in and use the throttle on it, see if we could get her fired up and just idling for a minute or two, see if we could build some oil pressure. Then I'll know it's worth throwing all of James's money at this thing, because there's, you know, there's stuff up here basically. Also. I need to be careful with the battery in this. We ain't got a charging system. It was not uncommon for these guys to go out and turn 15, 20 laps, come back in, stick it on the charger. They never ran a charging system. GM HEIs, you know, of course they like 12 volts, but they'll run all the way down to nine and a half, 10. So they got away with it pretty good. Now some of the trick units out there run a charging whirler off the drive shaft. Yeah, it's a real thing. But I peeked under there and of course this one doesn't have anything like that. So once this guy's dead, it's dead. I'm gonna have to haul it to the shop, try to find a battery charger, boost on it and everything else. So we wanna try to avoid that if we can. Now we're gonna figure out what size this last driver was. And it probably wasn't Sasquatch. It's already bad. It's already really bad. My leg is stuck. Okay, now what happens? My other leg is stuck. Okay, give me a second. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, just like the living room couch. Okay. That's the clutch pedal. I'm not going to hit the middle one because you guys know why. Ignition on. Here we go. Oh, I bumped it into gear. It runs, but boy, does it run rough. It was running on seven there for a while, but towards the end there, it's running on six, maybe five. Didn't sound good at all. We'll have to take a look at that. But man, for sitting here for who knows how long, firing off like that, that ain't too shabby at all. Well, we know the thing runs. We know it builds oil pressure. 
it's worth throwing some time into and these parts. I think I'm gonna start with the headers. Reason being is we gotta pull the sparkulators out anyway, scan the old peepers on that, see if we could figure out which cylinder is not happy. Maybe put some Marvel Mister Oil or something down there. Could just be sticky rings. Might just need to have the valves loaded. But since we've got to pull the sparkulators anyway, it's a perfect time to try to ease these headers out of here. Also got to try to throw some air at these tires and grab a jack so we can get it up a little bit because it's literally just sitting on the headers, which is going to make removing them pretty difficult. I think we'll start on the captain side and then we'll come over here to the drinker side and get going on this. I don't know if these tires are going to hold air on this side. They look pretty rotten, but these look like they might have a chance. Let's see what the LF says to us. Maybe. These are 26 and a half, 815s. Oh, it's not looking good. Okay, it's starting to move actually. We might have a shot here. Something going on with this valve stem here. Well, here's where we're at. That tire miraculously held air. This one is not shocked. Nope, not really. Sparkulators are out. And just as I heard, this guy right here, not firing at all. And it's been a long time since she fired. Doesn't mean it won't come back around again. That's this guy right here, which is why the exhaust sounded so funny. Also, this is kind of a homemade pipe here going down just to clear the Z-bar, because these weren't Z-bar headers. But that was that dead mist, that thud we were hearing. Now comes the fun part, trying to wrestle these out of here with not a lot of vertical clearance here. We don't have much. We've got a jack. Maybe we can find some stuff laying around. Sometimes you gotta come in from underneath. Sometimes you can wrestle them down from the top. We'll just have to try it a couple different ways. But first, I gotta get these old ones off. Well, I got the headers all unbolted here. Now comes the fight, getting them out. See, on this side, you need a lot of vertical to get these turned and come up. And in some cases, you gotta take the Z-bar and or the oil filter tray out. Look at this. Some nice stamp steel rockers. We got manly guides in here and locks. So, pretty nice valve train setup. And based on this slack, I can tell you that it's a hydraulic flat tappet or a hydraulic roller uh, cam and lifter setup. So, pretty cool. It's uh, kind of dirty. Kind of dirty just from sitting there. So, based on the casting number here, these are 194.15 valve heads, but they can easily, easily be ground for 202.16, which is probably. I'm gonna guess what they are with the kind of money they already got on the top end here. As far as what the rules said, I don't know, okay? I, that would just be my guesstimate, I guess. I'm gonna to try to get the front end up in the air here, get a jack stand under it somewhere, see if I can get some vertices out of it. I wonder what Tanya Tucker's doing. <laughs> sure it'd be nice if she, you know, did something or, I don't know, made an album, did music. That'd be cool again. Well, can a guy even get it under the thing to, to do the stuff? There we go. Something stuck in my arm. That's fine. I 
I don't know, that seems aggressively high. Let's see. Oh yeah, right there. Sure. One more. Too much. Down. Yep. Wedge. Wedge is in there. Let's see, custom torched open bell housing. Mm hmm Some wire hanging through the floor. Nothing special on the drive line. It's got a deeper oil pan though. That's neat. So you can see the difference in the headers here. This one, James just quickly threw it together to work. But you can see this big notch here, and that's for that Z-bar. This tube's got to come down like this. These are like a circle track series, but some of those shifters, there's just two levers in here. You kind of have forward, reverse, high and low, and the linkage is direct, straight forward, where this clutch linkage is completely different. So that's probably what's going on there. I'm just gonna throw the old ones on for now. They'll work just fine. <clears throat> yep. Might as well pull the oil filt tray out. It's right here in my left tooth. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Let's take the plug off the drain pan, I guess. That'd be nice. You see Doko. I'll be dipped. Well, we'll put a Wix back in it. That's 17, 19 horsepower. At least. What have we got? We got a GM four speed flavor back here. Severe, severe weight reduction. It's probably pretty nice cooling actually. Aftermarket springs up front, they're coils, you know. Not the Leafs, of course, come on now. There's also aftermarket rear leaf springs. Some feller put some time into this thing and I ain't kidding you. I'm looking at it. All right, a guy's got the headers back on. Yeah, they're definitely gonna leak like level 13 bad. They're just, they're not sitting right, but that's the way they was, you know what I mean? Losing light here any minute. I'm gonna start packing up for tonight. I'll be here right at 7.30, 9 or a.m. early o'clock. Yeah, and I guess we'll jump in and get the lightning whirler out. Fuel make it happen here. Intake elizer. Doll all that up. Get this thing all put back together. And I might even, quick, tonight yet, try to pop two tires on this thing. We'll find something here. I mean, we're at the Freedom Factory, right? They got to have some leftover tires from DeSoto days. See if we can get those on the front while we got her up. You know, it's in our teeth, is what I'm saying. See you in the morning. Oh, good morning. We got the Florida wind coming in from 360 at 92 knots. So that's fine. Sand is good in the eyeballs. No, it gets kind of, you know, not good after a while. Going to go ahead and finish up the Earl change right away this morning. Of course, got to run a Wix. Normally I write the date and miles on these, but zero laps that's how confident i am since she's a race car you need the right oil fillers so of course we're gonna run motel a t4 heavy duty diesel oil here and for the fifth court hyper lubes i don't know it's got a flag on it it says high performance made in the usa so i've already filled the oil filter of course so this jugs down so what i like to do is Top them off with this honey here. And you could shake on it and then it'll all flow out a lot better, you know. How's that? Sure. That's good enough. Yeah. Got a trash pile going over there. Got to pick up later. The rails are, they're getting, they're, they got slippery. It's falling off the rails is what I'm saying. Guy moved on to try to get this intake off so we could put this nice RPM performer or whatever he had. And no, that ain't gonna happen. The bolts that hold the intake to the heads are so rotted and rusted. It's just a nub. You know, looks like a guy's back teeth, basically. I tried to vice grip them and heat them and I was gonna get a Sawzall in there. It can be done. I mean, probably a plasma or a torch or something, but here and now is not the place or time. And Speaking of time, I'm running out of it very, very quickly. So I think I'm just gonna try to clean up the intake as best as I can, leave that alone. We're still gonna throw the new carburation on it because that makes absolutely no sense, but it's probably still more gooder than the unit that's on there. So we'll do that. And it's way, way out of time. So we'll also go ahead and do that. 
throw some new sparkulators in it and he's got some new lightning hoses we can put on it so we could still doll it up a little bit but i've still got to chase down a way to get this water pump to work as well i'll show you what i'm talking about so they're supposed to look like this and i've got a bunch of these and that thing and i like i said i've soaked them and tried to vice grip them and everything that ain't coming off very easy the other issue is we ain't got nothing to tension up the water whirler here off of the crank pulley. I'm assuming he might have had a little electric motor in here or something. Um, I don't see any evidence of any sort of charging system in here at all. So what I'm going to try to do is root around and find just a basic alternator bracket, throw in a charging whirler and just use it as a tensioner and just throw a standard belt on here and that'll get our water whirling a whirling. I think we also have some new valve covers. You know, maybe we could throw them on. Sure, why not? That also doesn't make sense. And then we got to move on to this. I've got tires. <coughs> well, they, the tires don't tire. They're not rolling. So that's, that's also neat, I guess. Got the old fuel make it happener off. Gonna throw on this rig here. Now this is a no choke unit, full race mode. And then of course it's got the manual secondaries. She's not waiting on vacuum. You just stick your foot in it and you're throwing in some more onions immediately. That rig ought to work just fine. Now this is probably, well, I know it's too much carb for this motor, but we can tune her in a little bit. I might even be able to scrounge up a jet set if we got to get in here and play with that. We'll definitely have to set the floats and do all the basic stuff on initial setup, but we don't have to rebuild this one. That's nice. NHRA fuel system, that's complete basically. I'm gonna take a zip tie and just snag it off of this. Bring her back just, you know, a titch. Should have a 90 in here somehow, but I don't know. Good enough for the girls we date. Gonna go ahead and finish off these, oh, wow. That's torque to all of it. <clears throat> so is that one. These valve covers. And then we can stop dropping sand and everything else in there. Then we'll get into the sparkulators and the lightning hoses and whatnot over there. All these beautiful parts. Nothing fits. Headers didn't fit. These are absolutely gorgeous valve covers. But they don't fit these locks. See, these are tall valve covers. No baffling in there. Those other ones, you set them on, contact. Issue, big issue. I splurged and got some really nice composite gaskets. These don't fit. Gotta use the studs off the old one. So basically, we're back to using the old valve covers with new gaskets and potentially new spinner honors. Great. 397.4 million hours later. Right where I started, except we got an oil change new fuel making happener, fuel system's done, and at least we know it runs. So maybe we're making some progress. Look at this. This is so rotted, I could see through the valve cover. It was on this end, must have had a bunch of moisture in it, so I gave her the flipperoo. This is all gonna splash up and hit down on this side. I'm hoping this new composite gasket, it's really thick, it's like a quarter inch, creates a big enough wall that we only get a massive oil leak, but not enough to start a fire. You know what I mean? We just, we know it's got oil in it, kind of leak. Moving on to the sparkulators. Of course, we got the old AC Delcos, gonna plop them in quick, and then we'll put the new lightning hoses in. Once that's done, we're back to firing it up again. And I'm gonna throw the timing light on it, get the, at least the timing adjusted. And I should have some parts coming pretty soon. They're used, but they're gonna work. You know, charge a whirler, slash, not gonna charge, using it as a tensioner whirler so we can move the water whirler and run it longer system configuration. Got a charger whirler in, put the turnbuckle and a pulley, but most importantly, Sam's over here cleaning up the windscreen so we can see. He went straight to the buffer, he's not messing around. The trick on these carburetors, you got these vents here and circle track or off-road or even drag racing, if you upset them because of G-forces, 
usually fuel wants to pour out of the rear bowl, you can take an old spark plug boot like this, pop her on, take another one, pop her on the front, put a piece of fuel line in here, and now you got a bridge. And then you can vent it to the top, or if you want to, you can drill a fuel hole so it drops evenly in between. But what you're doing is trying to prevent a bunch of fuel just spilling out and bogging you down. You're transferring it from bowl to bowl, back and forth, and letting the floats deal with your fuel. We're probably not gonna need to do that, but if we have to, we've got some wires laying around. The super fancy MSD Lightning Shooter 10,000 XLTs that James has requires a special crimping tool, which I don't have. You know, I got a vice grip and a Leatherman. So we might go back to just using these. I mean, they don't look bad at all. Like I say, the mice haven't gotten to them or anything. But we'll see what happens here. Irreplaceable race car here. We're gonna move it over towards the shop. We got rain fixing to come in and we want to start working on tires and stuff. Hey, don't scratch it. It'll watch the paint. This is watch the floor jack. <laughs> That's how I should have changed the oil. Easy. Got her pushed under the awning here. There's some people out here that wanted to take some practice on the track. Uh, Brad DeBerti, whoever that IndyCar feller is, they're out there getting some practice in. Over here, I finally got the lightning whirler out. This thing was absolutely hermetically sealed. At first, I could only get it to move with the Tanya Harding. Then I got the old, can you please move 6,000 in there? And finally the arrow. The oil soaked her in and we got her out. Reason being is the timing was so far off, I couldn't even get it to fire after that initial time. So I'm gonna set this correctly, the old rotor button, point it towards number one, and see if we can get this dialed in correctly. James is in here swapping tires. Get some fresh meats on there. Oh yeah. Look at these, they're only like 20 years old. Yeah, I ain't done. They'll soften right up. Yeah, yeah. Won't go burn out. Get some heat in them. They'll come around again. Are those eights or tens? You think? These, the wheels. These are left side, and they look a little bit more narrow, a little more offset than the rights. The rights. Yeah, that makes like sense. Eights or nine. Yeah. These must have been from the DeSoto days, so it only seems fitting that those go back on the car and. That's that what he went up That had been a spec tire for one of the classes they had out here because he got a boatload of them. Oh, did that you? in this shop, yeah, that they left behind. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. What are these? Probably 26 and a half? I think they're 27. Oh, 27, okay. Yeah. 10, 27, 15, F45 Hoosiers. Normally you can like score it with your thumbnail. Yeah, that was hard to run rock. But these are just tough but we'll warm them up they'll come back around so we're setting this up here a little tip you guys have seen me do this a thousand times just quick bing bang boom but i thought i'd just show you down in here there's the oil pump shaft which you guys can't see just trust me it's there it's doing the thing it's pumping oil this has got to sit inside of that well this groove exactly matches that rotor they're one and the same so what we're going to do is basically turn that with a long standard screwdriver to shoot off in the angle we need. Now when you drop in the lightning whirler, see these gears are obviously angled, right? So you're gonna point your rotor this way because then it's gonna seat. It's gonna seat. It'll seat in there. It'll slide down. It's gonna grab. Shoot off that way towards your number one. And then we can come in here, and I think I got it pretty close on the timing tab already. 12 to 18, we'll get this fired up, then we can throw the light on it, start dialing it in. I don't know why he had vacuum advance, the previous owner, not James, but the other guy. We don't, we're gonna cap that off. This thing lives on the chip, basically. Got five gallons of fresh fuel back here. 
see if we can get this fired off. The battery's almost dead. I left to get a couple parts. Sam goes to work on this thing. Look at that. We're brand new. I have to bring see where you're going here. Holy smokes. That's literally brand new. That'll be moved her in. She just started raining and it's supposed to rain for a couple hours. Sam brought in his battery charger. We just threw that up on the fuel tank. You know, sparks, fuel, that's fine. Got that juiced in. Now we can run it longer, get her tuned. Got the PS pump belt on. She's really floppy. It's that old one that was on here. And those belts are done. Got the vacuum gauge set up and ready. She's dialed in at about 32.7 degrees for now. I gotta go through the fuel, make it happen, or get this dialed in, get the idle set, then we'll come back and do final adjustment on timing. So I'm just about ready to fire this up and start doing some tuning. Bring the thunder. <laughs> Well, fellas, we just had a really heavy rain. Oh yeah, look at that. There's supposed to be some racing tonight. Oof da. Well, they're good at what they do. They'll get her dried up. James is uh, fine tuning the Usually caliper. Usually you get a uh, bigger metallic tool. James took it down pit road here, just easing it around. The right front was still sticking, and we thought we'd just get some rotational mass on her, and it broke free. He's gonna put it around a little bit, see what the sketch level is, and we both thought if it's 11 down to maybe like a 10 and a half, yeah, we'll still go on the track. It's got no brakes, anything like that, but if we just ease, you know, should be all right. How's it feel? It feels like you gotta drive it. How's the temp and everything? Oh, I wasn't. Uh, it's uh, 170. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't really looking. I was just more so in it. 
<laughs> and for the pleasure of driving her. <laughs> but yeah, it's actually with no brakes, it's actually not that bad because it's geared so aggressively. Oh. And you just come off the gas and it's already trying to desell on its own. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Get in there, dude. Take it for a rip. Not good. <laughs> Do you almost in you're almost in there. This thing lights on fire, I just I'm just gonna wait it out. If it lights on fire, you just put it in the weeds, alright? Yeah, I'll just step in the tree roll. <laughs> right in the thunder. Here's the first place prize, Freedom 500. Merca, Mercai Lego, something like that. I don't know. It's got stuff in here. Well, it's not the tractor you want. No, it's not the tractor. You don't win it, you know, this ain't stuff to it. Looks like, like a small block swap, though. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like a 305. Yeah, 327. Box back in your truck, thank you very much. All right, James, before you go wheel this thing around the track, Fill us in on the history, because I know you know a little bit more about this than I do, obviously. Yeah, where you so, uh, the second we uh, purchased the Freedom Factory, I was like, you can't own a round round track without owning a round round car. So the hunt begun for a car. And, you know, always things always have to be a budget, make it worth it. And I stumbled across this car on Facebook Marketplace for 700 bucks. Oof. It, uh... The best part about it was it was a winning car out here and I have photos that show it on the racetrack out here winning. That's awesome. Uh, here's it taking a parade lap after it won a race Look at that. before awesome. it was painted the American flag. The guy was a minimalist. He always did the most of the least with the car and it showed in his performance because he'd come out and win almost every race. Uh, Fortunate story is he passed away at old age, uh, bad health, and his family ended up with it. And they couldn't do anything with it and wanted to see it go. And uh, I was just there to buy it. That's awesome. Now you're returning it to the track today. Now it's going to make its laps again around the track it used to race at and win. That so. is so cool. And we kind of figured because of the Dale, the memory of Dale, that was February 01. And then we found punches in the belts on the cert card here that's also 01 yeah so. the last it was raced was uh 0102 right around there i don't think it was ever raced past like 2004 2005 because that's around the time the track closed and uh you know it's one of those things it's the guy had a, an awesome gmc box truck that he used to tow it with and it was all set up to be the workshop you know he cared more about his race car and racing than he did about anything else really that's all he did was you know, worked on the car, got it ready, yeah. raced it. Two decades, and James pointed this out too. He had a snap cover, kind of like a boat. Yeah. That'd go over this. He didn't have an enclosed trailer or garage, it was an open trailer, so he had a uh, canvas snap cover that would cover the whole car. Unfortunately, I lost it, but. That's awesome. Yeah, he is. He definitely, uh, this was his pride and joy. So, Let's do I it. told him I'm buying it, and I'm gonna go back and race it. So that's <laughs> what we're gonna do. Um, doesn't have brakes, but. We don't need brakes to turn left, so it just won't go as fast as the car could go yet, and then I'll get brakes on it eventually. There you go. But uh, we'll, we'll get some, some heats installed in her, and yeah, we can do some braid laps, and then uh, tomorrow we're hitting the burnout pad. <laughs> nice. These things, well, let's just say it does good burnouts. I'm excited to see all these smoke. Look at all this front end setup. It just wants to go left so hard if you let go of the yeah, wheel. The car's set up very well.
on the track again. Dude, that sounded wicked. It sounded way wicked. Dude, that thing is grass. Sinks up in the RPO, dude. I was checking gear on the back. Oh, yeah, man. You know the burnout? It smokes them. I seen that the, the brake was starting brake to get real toasty. hot. Yeah. But if it, it feels, the faster you go, the easier it just turns. Turns? Down. Yeah. She's dialed, man. Easy. Don't change the setup. Yeah. No, it, it's it's golden. It it's just so needs, awesome. I mean, I'm definitely going to do brakes on it whatnot. Get it to where we can you know drive it but i mean that was out there no brakes it? it even looks amazing around the track yeah like just it belongs basically this is so cool it definitely smokes and retires effortlessly so like, oh yeah i wonder what gear it's got it's got to be like a 411 or something it's got to be a good gear because it literally that second gear just rolled in there and let it rip and it, it took it yeah well thanks for letting me take her with your race car yeah, man for get her going with it yeah I'll we'll just slowly get it better than before you know we'll be out there racing them. There you go. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with the thing. Well, that's going to do it, fellas. A once winning car right here at DeSoto Super Speedway. Return to the track. Yeah, it was a full throttle, but it's still out running and driving. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.